Hello once again, wonderful children from Ritter Avenue Church. We are so excited to have you join us again this Sunday, September the 13th, 2020, for another wonderful time together in our Sunday School class. We are so glad that you can join us. We sure do miss seeing you in person. And it won't be long before we're going to try and experiment with having you all back and maybe maybe having a shortened time of our lesson during our, our worship celebration. We're just kind of trying to figure that out right now, but we will certainly keep you posted. We are very glad to have you today. And last week, if you were able to join us, hopefully you remember that we studied a country in the Middle East. And it was the country of, do you remember what it was called? Anybody? Good day. Oh, you were yeah. so close. It was the country of? Jordan. Jordan. That is exactly right. And They're today, not even close. Well, <laughs> today we're going to talk about another country. And you may have heard of this country if you listen to the news or if you hear your parents talking about things because it's the country of Iraq. I was going to say that. Were you going to say that? Yeah, Iraq. And it's spelled I-R-A-Q. Because I was Iraq. sounding out the... Yes, it's a different, it's kind of a different word, but it's, it's Iraq. Now, let's just review, okay? We have our globe here. Let's review where we are. Here we are. Here is the United States of America. And we know that. And good, we're glad you know that. You probably all know that, don't you? Well, here's Indiana. Now, remember, the Middle East is all the way around to the other side of the world. So I'm going to keep my finger here. I'm going to spin this around. And the Middle East is right over here in this portion. It's pretty much the same uh, latitude, that means same up between distance between the North Pole and the South Pole as the as where we are in Indiana. So here is the Middle East and the country of Jordan that we studied last week is right here. Where? And the, it's this kind of orangey one here. Oh. And the country of Iraq, I don't you probably can't see this, but it's this purple one right here. It says Iraq. I R A Q. I Iraq. Can, see. can you see it right here? That kind of pur not the pur it's kind of pinkish purple. Sorry, there's a purple one over here, and um, that is Iran. That's a bigger one. We're not going to be talking about that one today. But Iraq is the country right here. And the cool thing about Iraq is that we have some uh, missionaries that actually go there and live there among the people to try and help to tell them about Jesus in a very very difficult place. Uh, we don't often visit places in the Middle East on vacation, but there's some pretty cool things about Iraq that we would like to teach you because we want to make sure everyone gets a good idea of, of the bigger picture of the whole world. And yes, we're going get, to get our packets out here in just one moment. Let's, let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Bow your heads, please. Dear Lord God, we thank you so very much for this time together. Thank you that we can study your world because in the Bible it says God so loved the world, not just the United States, not just South America, but the whole world, and that includes all the people in the Middle East. And we would just pray, God, that you will help us to understand better about how to, to pray for our missionaries and to those that they are telling about Jesus. We pray that you'll help us to be kind to other people here and that you will help us to tell people we know all about Jesus too. Thank you, Lord God, and your precious Son, our Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I'm just going to move our glow right back here. It will still be in the picture here, but we're just going to remember that we are right here and that we are studying the country of Iraq today. Now, just like Lynn, oh wait, by the way, if you have your packets, we invite you to get out week two. It will say week two, 9, 13, 20, which means September 13, 2020. So if you can get everything out of there, we'll just go through the, the pieces, the portions and pieces of it. Okay, you can just pull everything out if you want to. You may already have your stuff out and that is absolutely fine. By the way, while you are getting your, your packets um, open, there are gonna be a few supplies that you will need today. So, um, you will have your craft supplies for your craft in your packet, but to help put that craft together later, you're gonna need some glue. You may need some scissors as well, so you might wanna have those handy. But definitely glue, if you have a glue stick, that's great. If not, any kind of glue will work. Glue, some scissors, and, and perhaps some markers to help finish out the project, okay? So you can what go ahead and- What are we gonna use the markers? Oh, well, we'll tell you about that in a little bit. So go ahead and get those ready, get your packets out, and the first thing we're gonna do in our packets, if you can find your page that looks like this, 
just like what Landon was reading just a minute ago, and it has. I wasn't reading. Well, but you were telling me what the what the country name was. Iraq. Now, take a quick look at it. You can look at it, hold it down, but I'm going to look at it here. Here is a picture of what the Iraq flag looks like, and you'll wait, have wait, a, wait. All right, right here. here. Right, that's the Iraqi flag, and after a little bit, you'll have an opportunity to to color. color. Right, you can color that. So the, the the colors on this flag are pretty similar to what we what we colored last week for the country of Jordan: yep. red, white, black, and green. Those are the colors of the flag of Iraq. So you have that in your packet. We may or may not get to that during our class time, but you can always color that with markers or crayons later on. All right, so if you have your page, let's just go through a few things here. This is so interesting. You may remember, does anybody remember the language, one of the languages that is spoken a lot in the country of Jordan? The same language that's spoken a lot in the country of Iraq. Do you remember what it was called, anybody? Do you remember what it's called? You have an alphabet that you got last week in your in your packet that has some of the letters in it. Do you know? Do you remember what it is? Japanese. Not Japanese, but that is a good guess because in Japan, in a different country, they speak Japanese. Well, in this country, they speak... Arabic. Arabic. That's exactly right. So in the country of Iraq, mostly they speak Arabic. And it's so interesting because on the flag, in the middle of the flag, the letters on the Iraqi flag spell out, God is Almighty. This? Now, yes, those little pieces right here. They're and, letters? Yeah, they're letters from, from, their, um, from their Iraqi alphabet. Now, th when they say God is Almighty, guess what? They are not talking about the one true God that we love and serve. They're talking about a God that they worship. And that's one of the reasons that we have missionaries that go there because they worship a God in the religion of, of Islam. Many of is them, it a God of stone? Like what other people worship? That is a, such a good question. It's not a God of stone. It's somebody who actually lived a long time ago, but he didn't. When he died, he just died. When Jesus died, he came back to life. And that's why we know that our God is the one true God. So the, Mus the Muslims um, worship a different god that they call Allah, and and their religion is um, is Islam, and it's very very difficult for our missionaries to help them understand about the love of Jesus and the one true God. That's why they're there, and we can pray that that will happen. But that's what those letters mean. Now, you can see a sheep there, and the sheep helps us to know that Iraq likes to export. Export just means things from their country that they send out to other countries. So some of the they things... do what? To help other people. Just like the United States exports some things from here, corn, uh, beef, and things like that to other countries who might need it. Uh, other countries have things that they're really good at and they export. Can I color this and this? Yeah, but not right now, okay? So this, this sheep helps us to understand that Iraq exports things like uh, cotton, Crude oil, which is oil that you get in the ground that helps to to yes. to run our cars on it yeah. and to help heat our homes, and wool. That's why we have a picture of a sheep there. They raise sheep and they export a lot of wool. And wool we can use to make clothing and blankets and things. Yes. I think I know what that's right there. Well, what do you think their favorite sport in Iraq is? <laughs> Soccer. Soccer. That's right. Soccer is played pretty much all around the world, and that is the favorite sport that they have in Iraq. That's great, Landon. Very good. And let's just look at this orange portion right here in the middle. The word Iraq in Arabic means cliff, like you're coming to the edge of a cliff on a mountain or on a, on a rocky road. It means cliff. And the, the terrain there, that means what their land looks like. It's kind of dark, or not dark, it's kind of dusty and deserty and hot. It's very similar to what Jordan is. And they do have a few mountains there, but it doesn't snow on the mountains there quite like it does on the mountains we have here. There's only a little bit of snow for just portions of the time. Yeah. There, um, there is a thing that um, this place doesn't have that. What's um, that? That the other place doesn't What's that? have. They don't have the same God. That's exactly right. They don't have the same that God that we do. That one has the same one that we do, Well. but this one doesn't. You mean Jordan? Yeah. You know, Jordan had a lot of Muslims as well. Uh, What's Muslim? Muslim is a different is a different people people who don't who don't believe in the one true God, and it, they're they're created by our God. They had just uh, decided to worship somebody different. So it's really important for us to pray for our missionaries. So let's see what else we have. Um, this capital city is Baghdad. 
That's an interesting name. This Baghdad. Is Baghdad. Well, no, just the name of the capital city. And we've already talked about their language being Arabic, and their main religion is Islam. Now, did you know that inventions from Iraq, people from the country of Iraq, these inventions were there. I didn't know this. This is so cool. Writing and just how to write things down. The wheel. What wheel? A, any wheel. Like the wheel that is on our bicycles or on our cars. They invented how to do the wheel. And mathematics. Aren't you glad that mathematics was invented? What's mathematics? Math. Math. Numbers. Math. <laughs> math. Actually, math, math is, yeah, they invented, ma they invented math. It's really interesting. And they probably they did a lot of things. Oh, I know. And one other thing, the calendar. The calendar that we know, they, they, they must have been, have really good analytical minds because they figured out math and they figured out how to make sure that we could keep track of the days. I think that's wonderful. So it. underground oil is something that we find a lot in Iraq. And this is called an oil rig right here. This? That is, yes, that's a picture of an oil rig. And Where's we, the oil? It's down, it's down underneath and they dig down and they pull the oil up and then they export it. What's they it sell it to other countries. That's what it means. They sell Why it. Why do people even need oil? Great question. Look at this. It says oil is used to make gasoline. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys know probably where we put gasoline in our cars and, also and other car places. Gas car and, gasoline. I mean like car oil. Yes, and I don't know if it's the same kind of oil, but they use all kinds of oil. Now, there's a really cool little uh, experiment that you could do down here because in Iraq, one of the things that they love is called a kebab. What's now, a kebab? Well, that's a great question. A kebab is simply a long, skinny skewer, a little pointy stick, and you put small pieces of either meat or vegetables or both on there, and you slide them on, you slide the next one on, and you kind of do a pattern. You put a vegetable, then a meat, and then another vegetable, then another meat, and you put them on this skewer. How do you and then, make them? And then you, we're not quite, that, this is different. <laughs> this is called a kebab. And then you throw it on the grill or over the fire and you cook it. So that's a kebab. So if maybe. These are kebabs? No, this is, no, Leanna, we'll talk about this in just a second, okay? Just, I know you're excited because it's so, so cool, but be a little bit patient here. All right, so this is, this is a little experiment that you can do to figure out uh, the order that this goes in. And this is actually a Bible verse that yeah. we can learn. And wait, it wait. says, let your light shine before men that they may see you good, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. This is from Matthew 5, 16. Where? So you have to unscramble the words on the pieces of the kebab and put them in the right order and then it will come up like this. Okay, and I was reading it backwards. That's why I was struggling a little bit. I suppose I should have, could have gone like, if I had done it like this from the back, I would have gotten it. Oh, well, anyway, Matthew 5, 16. So some of the things that we can pray for are listed right here. Pray for the open doors. In other words, that people will be open to hearing about Jesus. And in the villages, especially those people who don't know anything about Jesus, there's a big job ahead over there. Many house gatherings are in Iraq. In other words, they don't have a lot of churches, church churches there, like what we know, but they have a lot of house gatherings. A lot of maybe the Christians, the people who want to find out about Jesus, or the people that have already said yes, will meet together in someone's house to worship. It's kind of a dangerous place over there. And I want to tell you a little bit more. Parents, some of the information that we gave you um, in your packet, this nice big packet, I want to just share with you all some of this information, but you can read more and more about it here in a little bit. One of the coolest things about Iraq, and I didn't know this either, maybe I knew it earlier, but I don't remember. Anyway, is that this portion, and if you take a look back here, guys, on the back of this, of the parent portion, this shows you where Iraq is in relationship to where Jordan is, where, that we studied last week. Here's Iraq, and Jordan is just right over here. You can just see a little bit of it. Saudi Arabia, Syria, Turkey, and Iran. So Iraq... Where's Iran? There it is. See, Iraq is the big yellow one. Where's Jordan? Jordan, you can just see a little bit of Jordan here. Is we, that the country we studied last year? It time? is, it sure is. What's this one? That's Saudi Arabia, that's, that's down here. Saudi Arabia is this big green, but here's Iraq. Anyway, so we can kind of see what where Iraq was. Some of the stories from the Bible that actually took place in Iraq before it was ever called Iraq, there was the old Babylon. Babylon, you might have heard some stories about Babylon. And that's where Daniel, was uh-huh that's where daniel was you might remember daniel and he was he helped and so he served two kings there but he still, still kept his relationship with god and the story of jonah 
and thank you honey and also the Tower of Babel that took place back in the book of Genesis. So there were a lot of things that happened in the Bible in this country that we now call Iraq, even though it wasn't called that at the time. So I think that's very interesting. And sometimes, uh, there, well, there's been a lot of war in the country of Iraq. And yeah. war just means that there's, there's not, they don't live in peace. We are so blessed here in the United States. We live in peace. Sometimes bad things happen. Yes, they, it absolutely does anywhere. But over there, the children sometimes are separated from their parents. They don't know where they are. Sometimes they are, they are left without parents or without any other family. Uh, it's, a, it's a very sad time. And so that's why it's so important for us to pray for our missionaries and to pray that Jesus will speak through those missionaries. Some of them want to find out about Jesus because they don't really know. And boy, when they find out about Jesus and that he is their hope and for a new life, it's just amazing. So um, sometimes it's hard to communicate because they don't know all the languages there. Here in the United States, most people speak English. Some people might know Spanish and some other ones, but most people speak English. Well, in Iraq, there's several different languages. So uh, the people who are trying to share about Jesus have to really be creative in the ways that they communicate. Uh, it's interesting because northern Iraq is called Kurdistan, and so the people who live there are called Kurds. <laughs> I don't think that's the same kind of Kurds as we have when we have cheese curds. It's called, we start with a K. What are cheese curds? Oh, they're, they're really yummy. <clears throat> anyway, but there is, there's a really cool place there in uh, Iraq. It's called the Noor Center, N-O-O-R, and this is on the second page there. And Noor is Arabic for light. And this is such a cool place where they tell people about Jesus. There are schools in some of the villages. I now, can't find it. Here it is, honey. Let me see. It's right here on this page. Oh. And it's how, how many of you just go to school one time in your whole life? You get to go for two weeks and then you're done. Hmm? Um, no, that doesn't happen. Or you get to go. I go to two weeks, then the weekend. That's right. The, some of the kids in Iraq. They only get to go to school sometimes one time in their life. They might go for one whole month and then they don't get to go back. And they Some might kids, miss their friends. Oh yes, and sometimes they don't get to go to school at all. We are so blessed. So our missionaries there are trying to help these kids learn not only about Jesus, that's the most important part, but also how to read and how to write and how to think for themselves. And so we need to be praying for the teachers there because there's some wonderful Teacher. Christian teachers there. Teacher. That's, yes, that's one of the teachers there. Or actually, that looks like she might be one of the little girls that's going to school. And if you see this picture here, she's writing some Arabic letters. So she's trying to figure out how to write. Now, when we write our letters and we write stories and, and, and words and so forth, we start and we write on the left side of our paper and we go across to the right. In Iraq, it's totally opposite. They start on the right side of the paper and they go to the left. So they read from right to left. It's very different there. But here we read left to right. Exactly. We read from left to right here. So there are a lot of differences there. But each of those children, each of those people in Iraq were created by God, just like we were. And they were created in his image. And we want to make sure they have every opportunity right, to just come to know Lord. Okay. So now, uh, the, another thing that is talked about in Iraq uh, that, that, that appears in Iraq are two rivers. Now you can see this on your yellow map again. There's a river called the Tigris River, T-I-G-R-I-S, and the Euphrates River. Now these rivers were talked about in the Old Testament. Tigris and Euphrates. Where's and the Euphrates? Here's the Euphrates. This is the big Euphrates River here. And this is the Tigris River that runs right through the capital city of Baghdad. What's and Baghdad? Baghdad is the capital city right there. That's the name, Baghdad. And there are all... What's the capital? Capital means... You know how Washington, D.C. is the capital of our country, the United States? No. Well, it is. And Baghdad is the capital. Indianapolis is the capital of our state, of Indiana. And Baghdad is the capital of the country of Iraq. Of Iraq. Iraq is about the same size as the our state of California. California is long and skinny, and this is more kind of um, more rounded and kind of looks like a I don't know what what does it kind of look like? What shape does that, that yellow portion look like, guys? Um, either a shoe or a gun. Okay, so we'll say we'll say a shoe. Kind of looks like a shoe. Well, California it's the same bigness. Same area, but California's just a little long and skinny as opposed to um, the shorter 
one that looks like a shoe. Well, there are a lot of interesting facts in here. A lot of interesting facts in here. And take the time to read that um, and show that to your children, parents, because it's really important. And children, if you're watching this without your parents, this is in your packet. Have them read it to you, okay? Just remember that it's really important to pray for them because they don't have the same blessings that we do here. And we just want to pray that they will come to know Jesus because Jesus loves them just like us. Now, we've talked about our fact sheet here. We've talked about some of the more detailed information about Iraq. Here's your Iraq flag, and it is on both your page here and also on the back of your parents' page. So the red, black, and white oh, and green is all you need. That's right. Yeah, now. Now, there's also another activity, just one second, Landon, that we can do. I'm just going to show them what it looks like. Okay. There's another activity that you can do that uses the Arabic alphabet that you had in your packet from last week. So you might want to pull that back up. Also, in your packet this week are, is a list of songs. There's two songs on here. They're in, they're in Arabic. And one of them is in Arabic, actually. The second one is in Kurdish, which is Kurdistan, which is northern Iraq. And you'll know these songs by the tune. I'm going to sing the words for you in their language, all right? What is that? I think that um, Jesus loves the children. Well, Jesus loves me. It's yes, Jesus loves me. But it's in Arabic. So let's sing it with me. Ready? It's Kad. Faka Havna. Kad must mean yes, do you think? Here we go. Kad Faka Havna. Sing those words again. Kad Faka Havna. Kad Faka Havna. You hibu naya so. That is so cool. So we can sing in their language about Jesus loving us. Now, this is in Kurdish. This is from northern Iraq. This is God is so good. We'll just sing one verse of this, okay? It says, Hu de bash e. God is so good. And it goes like this. Hu de bash e. Hu de bash e. Hu de bash e. Hu de bash e. Let's try that again. That's very nice. Ready? Who de bash a? Ready? Who de bash a? Who de bash a? Who de bash a? Who de bash woman? Oh, that is so cool. Next time you sing those words in English, think about how you can sing them in Kurdish or in Arabic too. You'll have that to go with, and we'll probably revisit that in the next couple of weeks. All right. Now, oh yes, Landon is very excited about our craft. Now, before we get to our craft, let's let's bow and let's, um, would you all pray with me and uh, repeat after me, please? Shall we? Let's pray. Dear Lord God. Dear Lord God. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For your wonderful missionaries. For your wonderful missionaries. Who tell people. Who tell people. In Iraq in Iraq. All about Jesus. All about Jesus. Protect them. Protect them. Help them. Help them. Give them strength. Give them strength. And courage. And courage. To let Jesus light. To let Jesus light. Shine through them. Shine through them. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. To let your light. To let your light. Shine through us. Shine through us. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. God will use you if you let your light shine for him. Now, one of the cool things that they do there in Iraq, and in actually a couple of the different countries that we've talked about, is to make something called a mosaic. What's a mosaic? That's what Miss Beth is going to tell you about right now. That's what Miss Beth is going to tell you about. We have just a few minutes left here, so we're going to get you started, and then you can finish it up on your own. Okay? Okay. You should see yeah. your instruction sheet is right here. Where's and on stuff? it, it will tell you that you you have a uh, an outline of a rainbow. 
you will need some glue and possibly some scissors and your beautifully colored paper squares, which we thought had adhesive on them, but they don't. They don't. So we'll need a little glue. And a mosaic in these Middle Eastern countries in particular, they can make them out of different things, but a lot of times you will see them out of glass or pieces of tile. And it's almost as if they're broken pieces, but they put them together in such a pattern. Sometimes these are on floors and walls and ceilings and they're beautiful masterpieces. And you wonder how those pieces of broken glass and tile could make such a beautiful picture, but it does. So we're gonna make our own with paper. Now when, when they do actual mosaics on the walls and on the floors, they would put those pieces of tile or glass in a pattern and in between them they would put, I lost the word, like grout. Like grout. grout. Um, sorry, thank you. That's okay. <laughs> I, I could see it but I couldn't come up with the word. So when you put these together, as you will see in the sample, there's a little bit of white in between there and that represents where that grout would go. So it would kind of get squirted in there and, and smoothed over so that all those pieces would stay together. So on our page, you'll see an outline lightly in gray like Landon has out here. And you have your colored uh, squares and they're different numbers of them. There should be, um, and I will have different colors than you do, but sort them out by the ones that you have the most of. And those are, there's 13. Just, just put them those. into piles by color and yes. then figure that out. And which figure, one has figure the most, which ones you has, have, have the most. Kind of different. put them in stacks like oh. Miss Jennifer has. I have 13 pink, nine blue, six orange, and four green. Now yours are all different colors. Landon has 13 green, uh, nine pink, six yellow and four orange. So the big ones are gonna go in the back and on the outside. So they'll, they'll be different, but you'll be able to tell right away. So this it's outside dragon. edge is gonna be the one that you'll use okay. your, the one that you have the most of. And take so your glue, you and, and as you can see, I already started putting these on here. I got a little anxious like Landon did <laughs> and started putting my mosaic together. So use your glue and follow those edges. Here, let me see. This is going to be easier here. I'll trade you. Can I try? Sure. The rainbow. This is still hard. Now, just you will like that. see that it starts taking shape. And you can see that this is going to be a rainbow. And there's some white in between there for the grout. Can help you? Now, down here on the, on the smallest that. half circle that you have, on your rainbow, those squares aren't going to fit in there exactly. So if you have some scissors and you want to cut the shapes to fit, fill in those gaps, that's perfectly acceptable. Now, once you get that all filled in with your paper and you decide, I really like this mosaic idea, I think I'll take my markers and you can do that. We certainly welcome your creativity. Let's see, I'm going to take a nice dark color here and you can make your background and fill it in like a mosaic as well. So you could go all around the back and fill the whole background in and you might want to choose to make different shapes like pretending that those are broken pieces of tile or glass. It will be a beautiful picture whatever you put together and we would love to see your Masterpiece mosaic. Yes. Oh, I like that. Say that fast three times. Yeah. I'm working on mine here, and um, I'm just I just put a whole bunch of glue in there. So if there's extra glue, then it might look like some of that grout. That's so just right. let it dry a little bit. And I'm kind of doing it fast, just so I can kind of show you what mine's going to look like. But you may have a couple of extra squares, and you can fill them in, or you can put them on the top, whatever you'd like yes. to do. We just wanted to make sure you would have plenty. So I've got my first two, my biggest two yeah, out great. there, and I'll put my orange and green ones on. We do want to see your pictures of your mosaics when you get done. We'd love to see them. Boys and girls, we are so, so excited that just that you have joined us. We are so excited that you have joined us and landed. That's going to be beautiful. And we can't wait to see yours. So send us those pictures. No, we love you. You are, you are created for a purpose. God loves you and has a purpose. God loves all the children of Iraq and all the people there. 
Continue to pray for them. Look for ways you can serve other people. We love you. Say goodbye. Thanks, guys. Bye. We hope to see you soon. Enjoy finishing your mosaics. Lena, that looks great.